All right. So here's one of the things I want to get clarification on before I ever go to court is that I want to see some sort of proof of claim that I was acting or performing some function of government or that I was operating in the capacity of Christopher Fleming or the legal person or um, US entity surety or whatever they want to claim. I want, and it's not like I'm going to argue and go, oh, you know, I'm not a US citizen or I'm not a subject, I'm not a person, I'm just negative vermin. I don't believe that there is any evidence to prove. I don't believe that there's a contract that I've been compelled to operate in. I don't believe that there's any evidence to prove that I'm, um, Performing some function of government, and if I was, then sh then provide me the proof or evidence. And evidence is, you know, agreement, um, facts that are agreed upon by both parties. So they have to come and agree, and we have to both say, okay, yeah, like this is um, admissible, and which is not. They don't have anything like that. Um, they have no contract that says that I'm compelled that I have to operate as the legal person. Um, the legal person is the uh, the birth certificate, the name on the birth certificate. And people go, oh, well, because you have the birth certificate, that automatically gives them the jurisdiction, and they created the U.S. citizen, so therefore, it's a creation of legislation. So therefore, it's regulated by legislation. Well, see, like there's sort of the, that's where like the different theories all come in. Some people say, oh, you didn't create the straw man, and you can't kill it. Or, um, you didn't make the legal, the legal person, and you can't claim that you own it. Or, just a, a lot of different theories and thoughts. And You know, the whole thing is, we're all working together, and uh, what I've come to, my own personal opinion and beliefs on this whole thing is that, I created the legal person that not me but my parents for me when I was born then they uh, whether they were knowing that they were doing something positive or not or really it was positive because what they did was they created a legal entity in which I could be dealt with and, have, and operated in a capacity like um, I have it written down here somewhere the uh, in the definition in the law books it did go through and describes and um, no, I'll just read it for you the uh, definition of straw man, according to um, Black's Law Dictionary. Let me just get through all my notes here. Definitions. Okay, cool. So, uh, Black's Law Dictionary defines the straw man as a affront, a third party who is put up in name only to take part in a transaction, a nominal party to a transaction. Um, Barron's Law, Barron's Law Dictionary in third edition also goes through to describe the straw man. As the term is also used in commercial and property contexts when a transfer is made to a party, the straw man simply for the purpose of retransferring to the transferee in order to accomplish some purpose not otherwise permitted. In other words, someone who stands in for you because you can't do it yourself, i.e. the courts, uh, debtor, etc. Um, the man, the real man, because uh, government isn't allowed to deal with uh, real men, or a man. They have to deal with the uh, fiction, like, because they're fictitious. We always, like, think, like, oh, the government, like, they're not a real thing. They, they just exist in our minds. Um, there's no... Like, oh, I'm going to go see the government today, or I'm going, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, we all think, like, okay, we've created this thing called the government, but it's a, it's a fiction. Um, which is the same way that Christopher Fleming is the fiction. And at the same time, it's not. It's, it, I mean, it's a presumption of law. Christopher Fleming is a presumption of law. They're, it's, a, it's a presumption from the court where they're presuming that I'm the trustee, or that I'm operating as the capacity, because it's, it's more important. <clears throat> Let me see, how do I explain? Uh, okay, so, um, okay. The way that my understanding is, is that it's like um, pieces on a chessboard. You have K1, 
kings and queens or knights and rooks and they all perform different maneuvers okay so first we have to do is we have to establish all the the pieces and the parts. So when I go walk into court, you know, I want to establish who I am. And instead of saying like, you know, oh, I'm Christopher Fleming, so they call Christopher Fleming. And most people, when they go into court, just you know, oh yeah, you know, I'm that person, or I'm Christopher Fleming. So whereas I do is I establish my what capacity I'm I'm, I'm there in. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not. Christopher Fleming, the legal fiction, the person, the surety. I'm. I really don't care what name they use. They can use Christopher Fleming, Christopher the Fleming family, Christopher. Um, I always like to say that my mother named me Christopher. Um, I'm born of the Fleming family. But um, if they want to refer to me as Christopher Fleming, that's fine too, because it doesn't matter really what the name is. The uh, the most important part is the role that you're playing. So it doesn't matter if, um, you know, oh, I named this chess piece, uh, my rook is named Freddy. You know, oh, Freddy this and Freddy. Well, who the hell is Freddy? No one no one knows what Freddy is. You, you tell them, um, that's the rook. You know, oh, okay, well, that's now I can see. It's Freddy means nothing to me. But when you tell me that it's the rook, okay, that's, you know, there's a difference. It's just like, um, basketball players or soccer players I played soccer so it's like a, I was a halfback you know my name's Christopher it's it's like oh well, you're Christopher you know but what role are you here in so when I'm in court it's you know oh well I'm operating in the capacity of the administrator the executor of the legal trust that had been created for the benefit of the real man myself Christopher um I'm the duly authorized representative for the legal person who has full power of attorney. Because um, there's no one else who's going to have um, power of attorney. Unless like I want to grant, like I've given my family a uh, legal, legal uh, power of attorney over me as well. Um, but for the most part... Yeah. We need to... Um, know who we are and establish your standing is the first and most primary objective when you're entering into the courtroom and, uh, and like this case that I have that I've been looking at I've been dealing with this all day too uh, I'm sure you guys remember this last case that I posted from the Vern PD I don't know if you can see all this but the Vern PD you can see if I'm getting this This one, all capital letters, obstructing a peace officer. Okay, so then they sent me this. <coughs> the Vern Police Department addendum letter. Ready to check this out? You guys are gonna kick out of this. Alright, so Christopher Elliot Fleming, all capitals, um, same citation number. Uh, letter due to refusal to sign the citation. So here's my denim. Okay. You see on here that there's no complaint. See how it says complaint? A complaint has been filed with Pomona Police Court or whatever, you know? See, that would be like a real damage or injured party. That would mean like someone actually came forth with an injury or a corpus delecti, which would, which is Latin for the body of the crime, which is required in every court case. Edwards versus State um, said that in every crime there must first be corpus delecti. In every prosecution for a crime, there must first be established the corpus delecti. You'll list the two examples. Uh, the first of which would be the charred remains of a burnt down house. And the second is the corpse of a murdered man. There must be some agency of loss. Okay, so those are uh, courts from the court. So you can see there's been no complaint that's filed. Mm -hmm. No complaint. But what do they check on here? Let me see. This is interesting. Let's read this. This says.
the following. See that? Letter due to refusal to sign citation. Listen that cute? Oh, oh, and uh, the following corrections have been made. So, failure to comply with the above items may result in a warrant issued for your arrest. Oh, isn't that nice? So, so they're sending me notice, you know? So, I don't know, I called them today and I told them, hey, you know, what do you want me to do with this? I noticed your notice, and um, I was going to just write them back in the complaint and just put, uh, would you please um, define the word letter uh, due to refusal to sign the citation? Every word that they put on here in their handwriting, just, what is, what, I don't understand your words. Um, what do you mean by uh, the following corrections? Because uh, I'm just a common man. I'm unschooled in law, so... I don't understand these definitions, and I want to be sure that we're using the same definitions for the words here, because that's always the, that's like one of the biggest things you can always do, like mess with them when they send you notices. It's just a notice; you can ignore any notice. Not you don't want to ignore a notice because then you're going into tacit agreement with the with the default arrangement on the notice. But, but, but with this, I could have wrote them back and just dragged it out, but I was trying to figure out what the hell they did because it seemed kind of funny to me that I got this ticket for refusing to show my ID. So they take me and throw me in jail for, you know, a few hours. And then, uh, release me and told me, they told me that I could sign my ticket with this. They said, you can sign your ticket, just put anything you want on there. So bam, I put, you know, under threat, duress, cohesion, UCC 1 through 207 without prejudice. And then, and then I get this letter where it's basically saying that, you know, you refuse to sign a citation. So, I don't know if they dropped, I don't know if they dropped the charges and then they refiled new charges of refusal to sign the citation or if this is like an additional charge or, or I don't know what this means but um and the officer I talked to today had no idea either, Sar Sergeant uh, Skykes uh, basically told me that oh that means that uh because you didn't sign the ticket that um, we wanted to be sure that you were fully aware that you were required to appear on uh, December 28th at the Pomona Courthouse that uh, if you don't, we're going to issue a warrant. So it's just like they, they threaten you more and more. So it's like, oh, I don't know, this, this is stupid. So let me get this straight. You, you arrest me for not showing my ID and then you release me and you tell me if I don't sign this release paperwork that you're going to hold me in jail for three or four days until you can get me in to see the magistrate. So I signed the ticket under threat, duress, and coercion, and then you send me another ticket for not signing a ticket? Like, and then drop the charges on the original? Like, or I don't know what they do with the original charge. Like, maybe the obstruction is still there? I don't know. But, I mean, this is a joke. Dude. Obstruction charges are, are, this is like, this is them basically telling me, like, dude, we didn't know what to charge you with. And uh, we just wanted to take you to jail because you're just a political dissident, and that's what you get. Dude, you deserve it. Because this is like the fourth one I've gotten like this this year, and every one of them just drop. So <clears throat> I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I think that uh, I have a few options. So I'm posting this because um, maybe I need some feedback, maybe some ideas. I still got some time. It's on the 28th. I know that the last thing in is the first thing out when you go to court. So if I file a motion or if I file an affidavit or whatever I put into the court, it's the very last thing that comes out. Or is the very last thing in is the very first thing that, the, that comes out um, when the judge is on the bench. <clears throat> it's assuming that I even get a judge. I'll probably get another commissioner who just tries to railroad me. But um, I'm just going to send a notice to the... Uh, they told me that the DA is the one who's filing charges against me, that they don't have a complaint of injury at, against me at uh, Laverne. So I'm just going to send a notice to the, um, or an affidavit to the DA and ask him uh, what form, what function of government that I was uh, engaged in at the uh, time that I was uh, given this. Because this is just a code. This isn't, I've never, I didn't break a law. This is a statute which only has a uh, force of law if I agree or consent to uh, be governed by it, which I don't. But, um,
I don't know, just some ideas. Email me if you guys are.